This is Oliver Bear reading Insubstantial, my story for Even in the Gray. Green considered the message the living darkness had sent him to deliver. It wasn't the message that unnerved him. It was something he had done countless times before. As a matter of fact, he liked doing it. Or perhaps he liked the mayhem it caused. The reason never seemed to matter so much to him. It was the place. He didn't like being summoned to the witch house, the unofficial name of the institute. He felt haunted when there, as if he was a component of the diseases that were treated. That's why he always went with red and black men. Together, not even the grave had been able to contain them. They helped him focus. The place was filled with fear. It was everywhere. The witch house was built with it and on it. It was in the walls, the floors, the ceiling, and the land it stood on. Without red and black men, he would always be green. Insubstantials are mere whispers made form, wraiths of verbal contagion collected from the dead and conscripted into messengers, poltergeists not tethered to place or emotion. As insubstantials, green, red, and black men were the best. They knew this because an ins insubstantial's ability to affect corporeals or to become some measure of corporeal was based on how well they did what they were sent to do. An, insub an insubstantial didn't even have a name until they were able to become somewhat corporeal. Their names were symbolic of emotions they specialized in manipulating, emotions that were gateways to possibility. Other states of being, as the corporeal's limited thinking would put it, the highest level of this was demonstrated by black men whose abilities now mimic the living darkness. Some even said that he was a direct vessel of the living darkness, for he seemed able to do things outside of the confines of the mission. But their names weren't important. Green didn't really understand the corporeal's fascination with identity. It seemed more like a disease to them, even their own confused and confounded. It was the message. There were uh, instances there were insubstantials who became fully corporeal and fully vested in their new identity. They forgot their purpose and had to be reminded by other insubstantials of who and what they actually are. Insubstantials stripped of their corporeality in stages until they remember what they must do. The insubstantial who calls himself Dr. Dominic Vox knows he's failed the living darkness, the transformation of Arnold Brown Jenkins, or whatever he wanted to call himself, is behind schedule. They were all Brown Jenkins to green. Whether or not they were stricken with the disease of identity, the living darkness still needed Brown Jenkins to establish a more permanent conduit to the corporeal world. What better choice than one with a fractured identity could there be?